Hey hey! Today we will go through how to do the ground pound from Mario. You know, the one where Mario jumps up, spins around and then falls on the enemies with the butt first. Yes, this is what we will be going to do. You have seen it in the older Marios, you have seen it in the newer Marios and you have probably seen it in a few other games as well. So, let's get started and jump into Unity. Alright, let's begin. Uh, as you can see I have already prepared a little bit. I have imported a few sprites, a character with a few animations and a simple character controller that only makes him able to move left and right and be jumping and is checking for it, is grounded as well. I have made a previous tutorial on this. This is a simplified version of that script so you can just go and check it out. Uh, the important thing to note in the character controller is that the um, is grounded check is a public method that we can access if we have access to the script. And we will be needing this a way to check if we are grounded in the new script that we will be making. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a new script. We can call it ground pound. Go inside, remove everything and start with an update method. Here we will check for an input button to start the ground pounding. We can use the fire input. So if input dot get button down fire one fire one is mapped to the left mouse button. So when we Pressing the left mouse button, we want to check if we are in the air, because we can only do the ground pound in the air. So now we need the reference to the character controller. Private character controller CC. Then in the awake method we can grab it. CC equals to get component. Like so. Now if we have pressed the mouse button and if is grounded is false so we need to be up in there then we will set a boolean variable to do the ground jump ground pound do ground pound equals to two and we need to create this like so and set it to false to begin with perfect now we can create a fixed update because the ground pound itself will be a physics based operation so we need to do it in fixed update. Here we will check if do ground pound is true. If do ground pound then we can go ahead and do our ground pound attack. Ground pound attack. Let's create this method like so. And what will this method be doing? Well, the ground pound is consisting of two steps. One where we are stopping in the air and do a spin. And the second is when we're falling down and smash the enemies. So let's start with the stopping and spinning. We can call it stop and spin. And then after that we will do a... Um, drop and smash we can call it drop and smash now we have the two parts of the um, ground pound so let's create these methods and implement them after we can change the order to make it more clear all right in the stop and spin part we will clear all the forces that are currently applied on the player to make him stand still. The first thing we do is clear forces. Let's create this method. Um, let's move it down. And the clear forces is pretty simple. We need a reference to our rigid body to be able to clear it. So let's get access to it the same way we did the character controller private rigid body at okay 
and in clear forces all we have to do is rigid body dot velocity equals to vector two dot zero and you don't need to do this other part but i usually do it anyway just to make sure he's not spinning or anything angular velocity equals to zero okay now that's done after the clearing of forces we need to set the gravity scale to zero to prevent him from falling down because of gravity and that should be it we can make the animations later on at the end when we know that everything is working so when, now this stop and spin part is done we can go on to the drop and smash the drop and smash part shouldn't happen instantly after this because as you have seen in these games he's actually floating in the air when he's doing top and spin and staying there for about half a second or so and then he's doing the drop and smash so really the drop and smash method should be an i enumerator so that we can do a small wait here so yield return um new wait for seconds and then we pass in stop time so let's create a variable stop time and we can move it up here to make and make it serializable so that we can change it in the inspector and we can set it default to 1.5 seconds so now that we have waited for half a second we should add a force to our rigid body to push him downwards add force uh, vector 2 down so that he falls down times drop speed or drop force and then we set it to force mode impulse like so let's create our drop force variable move it up here so that we can make it serializable and keep some kind of order set it to default of let's say five to begin with uh, oh it shouldn't be a vector it should be a float all right now he will be falling down but there is one step missing how do we determine when he's hitting the ground again to do that we can go to on collision enter okay and then we have to check if we are hitting the other collision from above so for instance if we are hitting something from the sides when we're falling down we don't want to trigger this so if other contacts the first one and then normals if the normal is above 0.5 oh, normal dot y then it means we are hitting it above or equal hitting it somewhat um, above if this happens then we can complete our ground pound let's create this method move it down so that we keep the order and what will the complete ground pound do well as for now it will only reset our gravity scale to what it was before because remember we change it to zero create this variable gravity scale let's move it up make it serializable so that we can play around with it later if we would want to let's set it to one to begin with okay now we can test this let's head back into unity 
attach the script to the player when it has compiled now okay press play can still jump and everything and if i jump and press mouse button he stays up in the air so there's something missing oh yeah it's because remember we changed drop and smash into an ie enumerator to make him wait well that means it this became became a coroutine and this isn't the way you call a coroutine so what we need to do here is start coroutine and then feed it the method as a string without and omitting the parentheses also we after doing the ground pound attack we need to uh, reset the do ground pound boolean into false again so that we can do it again later so now we can jump in back into unit and try jumping pressing and falling all right uh, it seems like the drop speed might be a bit small so we can change it let's set it to 20 Yes. yes, this feels a lot better. And now if we jump up the hills and try it up from there, you can see that he falls all the way down. And the reason we are this, uh, removing the gravity scale also, or setting it back to normal once you have hit the ground, is if you have set it back to normal when he's starting to drop, then it will become an acceleration and he will fall faster the higher up he started the ground pound. Perhaps that is the way you want your game, but I thought it should be equal uh, or constant speed all the way down. Okay, but we have some issues in our code at the moment. We can start with one, the first one. Let's jump up, start, and then you can see we can still move. So when we're doing the ground spin, uh, ground pound, we need to deactivate our character controller script so when we are starting the ground pound attack the first thing we do is cc dot enabled equals to false cc remember it was a character controller and then when we have completed the ground pound we can set it back to enabled equals to two let's see if we have solved the problem jump yes i can't change his location now while he's starting the ground pound okay let's try the other issue let's jump up on the hill to make it show easier then we start the ground pound and then again we can ground pound as many times as we want on the way down so we have to somehow determining if we are already doing a ground pound then we shouldn't be able to do it again by doing that, uh, to do that, we need to introduce a new variable, boolean. Bool is ground pounding equals to false. As soon as we start our ground pound, here is ground pounding equals to true. And then in the fixed update, mm, we have to check do ground pound and if we are already doing is ground pounding. So if we aren't already doing is ground pounding, then we can do the ground pound attack. And then in the complete ground pound, we need to reset is ground pounding again so that we can do it one more time or again after we have finished the sequence. Okay, let's go back into Unity and try it out. Let's jump up the hill and press multiple times. No, nothing happened. So yes, I can only do it once now, even though I'm pressing multiple times. All right, let's hook up the animations. As I said before, I have already prepared a few animations for this. And then we can go into the animator. 
So here you can see the only thing that's hooked up at the moment is the idle and the jumping. I haven't an animation for the movement. So as you could see, even though he moved left and right, it was just the idle animation. But that it's easy to change for your own game. So I have a spin animation and a drop animation. And I have created a trigger that is called is spinning and a boolean that is called is dropping. So let's create a transition from the jumping we will go to the spin remember we can only do the ground pound when we are jumping first and the spin part stop and spin is the first part of the ground pound from the spinning we will go to dropping and from the dropping we will go back to the idle so it's a circle and to go to the spinning yeah the condition is is spinning so when we trigger the spinning part, we go to the spinning. Uncheck has exit time. And to go to the drop, we go is dropping equal to two. And then we quit it when is dropping is equal to false. Like so. Perfect. Now we need to trigger these animations. So on the first part, stop and spin. We can trigger the animation. First, we need the reference to it. So, the same way as we did before animator, animator. Okay, and then grab the reference, animator. And in the Stop and spin animator dot set trigger and it was called is spinning. So let's try it out. We go inside. Let's see, it's spinning and then it's falling down. Perfect. Let's go back in and set our dropping animation. So on drop and smash animator dot set bool this time and it was called is dropping and set the value to true and then on the complete ground pound we can set it back to false all right let's go inside unity and try it yes you can see it is complete. We have the animations ready. We have the drop smash, a ground pound, and everything. Now, all you have to do is add the damage, and everything will be ready to go. So, perfect. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, I guess I will see you next time. Bye bye.